good deal. Um, the, the LP, the long one, came, came after we were all dead and in prison, all of us. So, you know, I, I got a copy of it after I got out. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. I, 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 I hope I don't fuck it up too bad for you. <laughs> I'm a long way from home. Um, this first song I'm going to do is called Making Mud Pies. Uh, most of the songs I wrote in prison. A couple I didn't, I'll tell you, and I do a couple covers too. But this song, Making Mud Pies, I had a, every song that I ever wrote, if I had a little help from it, I always try to acknowledge because most of the people that help me with these songs, they're dead or they're doing life in prison. And the guy that helped me with this song is a guy named Jimmy Space. And Jimmy had polio when he was a kid. So in the joint, he might have weighed 120 pounds, maybe, really skinny, and he walked, you know, like a guy with polio, right? He was a bank robber. And when he robbed banks, he would put a cast, a fake cast on his leg so that when he walked in the bank, they wouldn't go, oh, dude with polio, you know, so he could have half a chance to get away with it, which I thought was really smart. And he taught me to read a lot, so he, like, he was a, older, a lot older than me, and he had the coolest tattoo I'd ever seen in prison. He was Greek, Spacey, S-P-A-I-S-E, and that's Greek, I guess. And he had a Greek war helmet right here, and Gary Gilmore had hand-picked that through the bars in the hole, and Gary Gilmore I don't know if you guys know, they wrote a book about him called Executioner Song. He's the guy that got the death penalty reinstated in America. They had taken it away, like when Manson got sentenced to death, they took it away and gave him life. They gave everyone life. And then Gary got out, and he, he was, you know, no good. And he shot a couple people to death over like $30. But when he did the tattoo on Jimmy, it was before that. And Jimmy, and I always thought that was fucking cool because they wrote songs about him looking through Gary Gilmore's eye and all that stuff. Another thing about Jimmy that I liked is he taught me how to make a knife. And there was a guy that drove up to the joint we were at and, and they, they were from Oregon and, and the guy was really scared of him. And I, I was like, this guy's big and bad. And I'm thinking, what the fuck are you scared of that guy for? And he said that, Jimmy had stabbed his friend in a turnstile. Like, you know, sometimes in prison they have these, you have to go through these like fences that spin like at an airport or a hotel, those doors, but they aren't, they're prison-like. And he caught a guy, got caught in there and he fucking booked him. And I always thought that was cool. But anyway, he helped me write this song. It's about dope themed girls, which is like every girl I ever dated before prison. <laughs> Proletarian husband and your convict friends Your plastic purse is filled with fives and tens Two made up faces and your innocent eyes Your mercury mouth is spouting endless lies A silver spoon concealed in your breath golden arm hidden in a long sleeve dress. You listen for Keith Richards on your stolen radio. And watch Boris Karloff at an downtown show. Every morning spent looking for the man who makes you wait. Hours in the rain by the third street China gate. Tried methadone, sweet Jesus, values and red wine. It's hard to kill the passion when it's always on your mind. Judge 
her with mercy. Please don't measure her too hard. She was once someone's little girl making mud pies in the yard. Judge her with mercy. Please don't measure her too hard. She was once my little girl making mud pies in the yard. first one. Um, this one's called The Time's the Same, and uh, I wrote it half the time in Phoenix, Arizona, half the year is the same as California. Like they have that fall forward, spring back, spring forward, fall back, whatever the fuck it is. And they only do it for half the time there, so it's The Time's the Same. That's how I came up with it. Um, This one I was a flower leopard song and it made it on the EP. It's kind of different because now it's acoustic, but um, I think I wrote it in 1985. Empty and light acidity. 
just burn your skin and leave the holes for the cold to get in. My baby's lying dead on the phone. My baby's lying dead on the phone. Cause when she's lonely, she can't be alone. My baby's lying dead on the phone. And you know, all the times that I scream were just to show all my care was for you. And my love got mixed up inside. And up here on your skin, black and blue. Why is it? Kills everything that I ever cared for. So don't talk to me anymore. Don't call me in the night anymore. My baby's lying dead on the phone. My baby's lying dead on the phone. When she's lonely, she can't be alone. My baby's lying there. means with gas, right? Yes. Yeah, out here it's with gas and without gas, right? <laughs> These songs are all on the record. I only have 12 of them, but if you want to buy one, I'm not real good at hustling that shit, but you're more than welcome to buy one. I'm going to play a new song that I just wrote. I've only played it one time. I'm, this one I may really fuck up, but uh, we'll try it. It's not on the record. It's called Through and Through. Let's see if I can even remember how to do it. blue straight home to you I flew I knew of nothing better the harsh words have been spoken and the spell has been broken through and through through and through together we're alone and as the time slips past there are no words as painful I love you, I love you. The seasons come and go, and just like dominoes, they fall into each other. And the clouds cover the sky, and there's no star to guide my ship by, no more of your shores. The charms fall away and the bracelets turn to chains Through and through, through and through Together we're alone and as the time creeps past There simply are no words quite as painful as I love you, I love you I love you, I love you, and 
there's only me and I'm all alone. So it ends as it began. And I search the sky for a star to guide my ship by. And like a sailor, slowly die. Chasing the line where the sea meets the sky. Just like you. Harsh words have been spoken through and through, through and through. Together we're alone, and as the time crawls past, there simply are no words as painful as I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Through and through, through and through, I love you. called Shiny Pennies.
sad. I'll try to, um, Patrick asked me to do a tattoo song on a flexi disc. I think he's got a couple for sale. And I stole Robert Johnson's Kind Hearted Woman, of course, and put uh, lyrics to it. I'll see if I can pull it off. She came in the shop with no tattoos on her skin. She came in the shop with no tattoos on her skin. With a wink of her eye and a swish of her hip, she said, Hey, handsome, can you fit me in? My day had been slow and uh, the sun was sinking low. sun was sinking low, but no matter how big her tits around her ass, I said, hey baby, have you got the dough? I showed her the, design, the wall with all the hand-painted designs. I showed her the wall with all the hand-painted designs. Bob Roberts taught me the truth and some of mine. She showed me an infinity symbol on her phone and said, This'll be fine. I got the stencil ready and I sat her right down in the chair. I got the stencil ready and I sat her right down in the chair. spread her legs and said, please Shano, put it there. That was uh, six months ago and, you know, she didn't even leave me a tip. That was more than six months ago and uh, she didn't leave me a tip. I turned on the damn TV and she won this year's King Masters Championship. <laughs> but I don't cry people and uh, I sure don't pout I don't cry people and uh, I sure don't pout But she got a ink stained cooch cause I blew those lines out Yeah. <laughs> you how you can play one. Um, I'll try a I'll try a cover. It's a faces cover. I really like Ronnie Lane. I'm not a big I like I love the faces of course, but anything Ronnie Lane did I really love. So I'll try. But I can't really sing, but I'll, I'll give it a try. Can you 
show me a dream? Can you show me one that's better than mine? Can you stand it in the cold by the day? Neither can I. Glad and sorry. When all is done and spoken, you're up for run. this one but I'll try it. guy, of course, where else in the joint, and he used to call his girlfriend his trailer park girl. Like he had two of them. He had some rich chick, and he had this trailer park girl, he used to call her. And he was always asking me, which one he was going to get out? He was like a speed manufacturer. So he's like, which one should I go with? Which one? And I was like, go with the trailer park girl, man. Fuck that rich broad. I loved him dearly. His, uh, his parents were professors at uh, Penn State. So he was younger than me and he was in the band room and a lot of dudes tried to fuck him and you know they punked him and they tried all that shit. And I was in the hole when he got there, but when I got out, I really dug him. His name was Ethan. And you know, he just wasn't built for prison. So, you know, we started a band and we were doing okay and he would talk about this chick. So before he got out, he gave me her number because they had changed it to where you couldn't make collect calls. You had to have this fucking phone list so the feds could tell who the fuck you were talking to. So I got the number. He was out about a week and I called his girlfriend and I was like, hey man, where's Ethan? She goes, I haven't heard from him in three days. And I'm like, no, a little worried, not bad. So I wait a week and I call back. I go, hey man, have you heard from Ethan? She said, no. And then I got really worried. And so about two days more, I called and he had OD'd. He had gone and got dope and he had this apartment and he shot it and nobody found him for like 10 days. And you know, it was a real waste of a life, really sad. I felt really just awful. There's another song I wrote that he helped me write that I'll play after this, but um, this is Trailer Park Girl. I didn't rehearse it, so. I saw you standing there with your scraped knees and your peroxide bleach burnt hair. I think you've just been giving you all parole, smoking larks in a folding chair. About the time you looked half human again. story of just where you've been. I can't quite remember what it was you had to say. I still wonder today. You said, na 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 na.
par. Yeah, you won me over, but it took a while. With your West Coast strut and your New Mexico smile. As you went to the fridge, get me another Coors Light. Trimming gray. I found a Polaroid of you and me in there. With your bandaged fingers running through my hair. And I thought, na 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 na. What a wicked one. Torn away from. His father wrote a book about Moby, Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick. And I always wondered what his father, you know, felt. I knew, of course, he felt fucking upset, but I always wondered about him dying like that. Because that kid could have been anything. Now he's been gone 25 years, and, you know, I always wonder what he could have done. This next song, he wrote one chord for it. I wrote this song originally, it was supposed to be for my daughters, it's called Nursery Rhymes, it's on the record, but it kind of evolved again into another broken hearted song because, you know, I'm, I always have a broken heart.
sun is shining and the summer breeze blows, people laugh and smile. Life grows, but the sun in my eyes. This one's uh, called Blood is Thicker Than Water, and I did not really write all of it. I wrote it with a friend. His name's Brad Leonard, and Brad will probably, in his life, see the street maybe a month. When he was 18, him and his friends, he had two friends, they decided to rob a bank in Arizona. Just a regular kid, you know, not a fuck up like me, like I started going to juvenile hall when I was a kid. Just... They decided to rob this bank, so they fucking steal a car and they get this makeup. Like, you know, it's like, I don't know, fucking, you guys are young, but like Spiro Tiag, I don't know, some kind of fucking makeup. Like presidents or whoever, not like the movie, but for real, real makeup. So they fucking pull the car up to the bank, they fucking run in there, they fucking throw down hard, they get like a quarter million dollars, they go in the fucking vault, one of them, they're laughing about it later because one of them's trying to scoop money with one hand, got a machine gun in the other, you know, scared to death. Then as they're leaving the bank, they pop a smoke grenade, throw it in there and drive away. In the paper, the next day the FBI is like, professional bank robbers, fucking career. This is the most professional job. This had to be done by, you know, just these fucking, it's these fucking little kids. And they, they, there's like three of them and one of them's telling, they tell each other, okay, don't spend any money, don't spend any money, don't spend any money. And one of them like goes to fucking, I don't know, GameStop and buys every fucking video game and shit he can get his fucking hands on. So, you know, and then there's like bank money wrappers left around and all, and then they get busted. So they give him a youth act. He goes to prison for six, seven years, gets out. He's in the halfway house. The other guy gets out. The other guy's like, hey, I want to rob banks. And Brad's like, yeah, okay, but I got to be back at the halfway house by three. You think we'll be done by then? And they go rob banks. And they fucking, they rob this bank. And they're in the car and they're driving. And they're fucking got Metallica, I guess, cranked. And they're, they get away from the cops. And they're all stoked. And they're flying. And they finally, they, get, they pull behind some 7-Eleven, some store, away from the cops. And they get out. And they hear whoop, because the music's so loud. They hear whoop, whoop, whoop. And there's a cop helicopter right above them. The whole time. That's how they got away. They, they didn't get away. The fucking helicopter. Anyway, goes to prison. I meet him. We have a band. We called the band Slow Child. And this was one of the songs. It was electric, but... I changed it to acoustic. It's on the record too. It goes uh
only brother His father is someone he has never known Mom takes it out on him when she's around but There's a place inside that they can never touch A treasure he has buried deep of life he comes to understand the streets will teach him all he needs to know imaginary friends don't always have the answers when torn at a root a tree won't Okay, I'm gonna do one more. <laughs> and we're gonna play it safe. Maybe we'll make it through it. Um, this this last one, it's I could have done better with the lyrics. When I recorded this, I recorded it 18 years ago. I had nine songs. The dude asked for one more. Uh, I was telling Mick about this story earlier. I taught this girl to play bass. She wanted to shoot some Hollywood girl. She wanted to show her friends she could play. We're at a party at her house. I did Lion Dead on the phone, which I played for you guys, and she played the bass part. Anyway, so she wanted to show him, so we did it. So this guy comes up to me, and he's like, hey, you got more songs? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you want to record them? And I'm just thinking, get away from me, drunk motherfucker. You know, like, come on, I'm going to go to bed. And I gave him my number, thought I'd never hear from him again. He was drunk, this guy. So I'm like, you know, and a few days later he called and fucking I was in a studio in Burbank and I had to pull fucking shit out of my hat. I never meant to make any of these songs acoustic. They were all supposed to be for band. When I got out, I was in this band, the Flower Leopards, before I went to prison. When I got out, all I wanted to do was start another band. So every one of these songs is actually kind of an electric or the beginning of an electric song. But this is what happened. This is how it turned out. So. I had to do one more, and at the time I was breaking up with my son's mom. I almost said son's daughter, but that shit ain't right. <laughs> um, and it's called Well Anyway, and uh, it goes up. minutes. I listen for your step coming up my walk. I don't know what I'd say anyway. Even if we talk, I hate for you to see me 
this way. But the way you look at me couldn't be that great anyway. I forget that this is my real life. Why do I think what comes around once will come for me twice?